and Brother Anthony Roberts greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you've been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. Good day, uh, viewers. Uh, we are glad again to be with you. And uh, first of all, we would like to wish you a wonderful, a blessed 2017, the new year that is fastly coming upon us. We say all the God's blessings to you for the new year 2017 and hope uh, you, uh, God gives you an abundant blessing in this new year. Uh, we want to talk today about uh, grace, God's grace. And uh, before we do this, we want to go into prayer. I have my brother here with me, uh, Brother David Roberts, and he's going to be sharing with me today. And uh, we want to look to the Lord in prayer so before we go into our topic today, which deals with grace. So let's pray. Father, we are again thankful for your mercy, O oh God. We are thankful that in all our ways, we could acknowledge thee and thou could direct our path. We are praying, Lord, that you will help us in all we stand in need of. We thank thee for a year that is fastly going into eternity, 2016, and now we are going into 2017. And you said, Lord, thank you for your saving grace all through the year. And bless us as we come into this new year. We think not only of ourselves, but countries that are, Lord, in distress. We pray for them. Believers that are experiencing a difficulty one or another. Even those believers, dear God, that are being uh, hunted down and being, you know, destroyed for the word of God. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with them. Strengthen them. Bless us now, Lord, as we go into thy word. We ask that thou will take full charge in beginning, from beginning to end, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, dear friends, we're going to be discussing grace today. God's wonderful grace. Uh, we're going to give you the idea of the, the definition, a little bit on the definition, the description, and all those things that uh, concern grace. Uh, we are told, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any one of us should boast. So grace plays a very important part in our salvation. We think of those who have recently come to the Lord, and uh, the grace, we want to let you know more of his wonderful grace. Oh, that's, it's, it's wonderful indeed. So we're going to be looking into grace and uh, we see there that grace is sometimes people may consider it a free period wherein, uh, you know, you're not held uh, into account for your behavior or anything like that. You call it a grace period, a free period given to you. Uh, this is called a grace period. But when we think of it, uh, the depth of grace, you find uh, things like uh, God's loving kindness. God's loving kindness, also his favor and uh, all those things that concern the blessings of God. He loves us and his uh, everlasting love, his grace is bestowed upon us. We have uh, our brother here and he's going to give us a little idea on grace in itself. Our brother David. We can consider grace as God's unmerited favor. Mm. You know, there are different degrees and different aspects of, of grace. Mm. And uh, grace as well could be considered as God giving us the enablement mm. to even do things or to accomplish things for mm. his work, or for his honor, for his glory, that we mm. are incapable of our own selves to do. He gives us the grace to do such. Mm -hmm. But then as we consider saving grace, we consider God's unmerited favor. Amen. Amen. The fact is, we have something that we did not deserve. Mm -hmm. We didn't deserve. What we deserve was death mm -hmm. because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. But God has given us the gift of life. 
We didn't deserve that. We deserve death. So then we could consider even God's mercy towards us in that he didn't give us the punishment we deserve, but he gave us what we did not deserve, his wonderful grace. Amen, amen. And that takes us into a lot of areas wherein that God has able to bless uh, his exceeding grace, his abundant grace, as our brother had mentioned, is a matter of degree. You have different area, you have grace, more grace, you have abundant grace, you have exceeding abundantly grace, and you have overwhelming grace. Oh, God's grace is wonderful. So as we look into the word of God and, and, and it shows us more of his grace, we can tell you that it is profitable indeed. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, here it is, you can come to the Lord and experience his grace, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness. And God is going to bless. So the word in uh, grace in itself, as was mentioned, translated in the, in the, in the uh, New Testament, it talks about uh, chara, that's the word of uh, grace as it is. That's where we get the uh, charismatic or chara, charismatic. Or you have those people who are, who are, you know, exceedingly speech. They have wonderful speech, they character, they're charismatic yeah, in, their, in their approach. They have a grace about them, the way they move. And uh, people can admire these things. So we are looking at grace. And we see there that God's grace is never ending it's everlasting and we can enjoy and bask in the sunshine of his grace so oh brother what can you say more about grace grace is unbounded mm. because when we consider even ourselves who are saved we who are saved by the grace of god mm. whose we were what we were the condition in which we were mm. but yet God in his love, God showed love to us in such a condition. In fact, when we were without strength, Christ died for us. When we were helpless, when there was nothing that we could do to help ourselves to get out of the situation, because sin held us captive. Mm -hmm. We were in Satan's domain. We were in the power of darkness, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the realm of darkness. Amen. But in such a time when, even when we turn our backs to God, mm. we had no time for him. Yeah. But yet in that time, his grace did reach out to us. Mm. And thank God, there are many who can rejoice in that we are saved by God's wonderful grace. Mm. And uh, you know, as I considered it, as I said, the things we did, mm. think of the Apostle Paul, mm. who considered himself as the chief of sinners. Mm. He blasphemed. He was a persecutor. Mm -hmm. He did so many things, even against the people of God and against Christ. But yet, in that time, God called him. Mm -hmm. When he was persecuting the church, when he was doing such horrendous things against the people of God mm -hmm. and against God, in that time, God showed grace to him. Amen. God called him. So then he could have... Um, Thank God for his exceedingly abundant grace. Amen, amen. You know, when we think of God's grace, in contrast, we had the law. Mm. And the, the, the law is work, and then we receive blessing. Mm. But God has blessed us, give us his blessing, which we did not deserve, mm. that we can work for him, that mm. we can shine for him, amen. that we can do his work. Amen. So God's grace is so wonderful, and thank God for his wonderful grace, Amen. which he has Amen. dispensed to us or given to us, that we can be saved. Amen. Amen. There's a, a verse in Psalms, which I think sum up some of what you're saying. Psalms 130, 130, verse 3. If the Lord, if the Lord should us mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? What a question. If the Lord should mark iniquity, who shall stand? This tells us the importance of God's grace. You know what I mean? If he should check us on our condition mm -hmm. and uh, see, bring us to account, yes. we will be held responsible. And uh, who shall stand? There's none righteous, no, not one. 
and we give God thanks to know that his grace is able to give us deliverance. Paul, tell it, Paul tells us that. My grace is sufficient for thee. When Paul was asking to remove the, uh, the tone in his flesh, he said the Lord was able to tell him, my grace is sufficient for thee. God's grace is sufficient to remove the stain and curse of sin that is placed upon man and give us the freedom to worship and love him. So we are going on, grace. And there's a lot more can be said about grace. Uh, we talk about uh, the grace of God and uh, the things that grace, the words that are akin to grace, you'll find them as you go through the word of God, such things like grace and truth, grace and mercy. These are words that are akin to grace. So when you find that grace comes, these things come too as well. You have grace and forgiveness, grace and peace. And these things go along with grace. So these things are able to help us to understand how God can work in your life, bring peace in your life, and give you a grace, a peace that passes the understanding of man. No, oh, brother. As you mentioned in Psalms 130 and verse 3, if the O Lord should mark iniquity, who shall stand? Mm -hmm. Iniquity means that we were not straight. Remember the psalmist said, mm -hmm. I was born, born in sin, sin. and shaped in, in iniquity. iniquity. Not straight, crooked. Mm -hmm. That is how we were. Mm -hmm. And you know, so very often, we try mm -hmm. to be righteous. Mm -hmm. We try to be straight with God. Mm -hmm. We try to do things that are pleasing to God mm -hmm. outside of His grace, not experiencing mm -hmm. His saving grace. Yeah. So you can be a very good churchgoer. You can be one who read the Bible every day, mm -hmm. one who can quote the scriptures, one who do good deeds, even like the Pharisees did. But mm -hmm you are in iniquity. All you are doing, all your righteousness are like filthy rags. You are still not righteous. Mm -hmm. But God in his wonderful grace gives us his righteousness, what we did not deserve. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So thank God for such a grace mm -hmm. that we can be righteous, we can experience the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. by grace. The thing is, we are justified freely by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Just as if we have Amen. never Amen. sinned. And freely. Mm -hmm. We didn't pay the price. And we mm -hmm. couldn't pay the price. The Lord Jesus Christ himself paid the price. Mm -hmm. He gave his life. He shed his blood. His blood was shed. Mm -hmm. And that blood that was shed upon the cross of Calvary is a demonstration of God's wonderful grace to us mm -hmm. because that blood can cleanse us from all sin and has cleansed mm -hmm. us, we who come to know the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as our Savior, we who place faith in the finished work of Calvary, right, right. have received that wonderful gift, the gift of eternal life. And this is through Jesus Christ. This is grace. Amen, amen. Yes, yes, dear friends, grace indeed, and um, grace abundant. <laughs> the, in the book of uh, Ephesians, we are talking about, now you have received this grace, uh, how can we live out a life that is pleasing to God in respect of this grace? And I'd like to bring to you a little uh, portion in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, uh, reading from verse 25. And you're going to see there in the life of the believer, the life of the individual, how they can live this uh, grace, the life of grace, the life of peace, the life of love, that it can be pleasing to God. I read there Ephesians 4.25, Wherefore, putting away all lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things that which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. It goes on. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace 
it may minister grace unto the hearers. And give not, uh, sorry, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherein or whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We talked about that, sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and all wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And it goes on there, and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. Oh, you live that life. That's a life that God is able to bless to, to you. You, you will see blessings. The grace of God will afford you to live that type of life. That you be tender loving one towards another and express the grace that God has given unto us. Oh, how wonderful this grace we have. So we want to look into the, the, the Old Testament and uh, see there if where grace had uh, played a part anywhere down in the Old Testament. I have highlighted a king by the name of uh, Hezekiah, but I don't know if you have any place in the Old Testament there will uh, tell us about the grace of God. Uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the amen, Lord. Amen, amen. <laughs> yes. Uh, Noah found grace mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Lord. Remember, mm -hmm. the old world, they, they were corrupt. Mm -hmm. Even the, the thoughts and the imaginations mm -hmm. were evil continually. Amen. But Noah lived to please God. Mm -hmm. And God delivered Noah and his family when he destroyed the whole world in that Amen. time. So Noah found grace in the Amen. eyes of the Lord. Noah got what he did not deserve. And then in the Old Testament, you find a lot of um, the, the law, mm. a lot of the law to do and mm. to receive the blessing of God. Yeah. You do, you abide, you adhere to the principles, you obey and you receive the blessing. Mm. But in the New Testament, we have grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And that grace, we receive the blessing. What we did not deserve, we receive it by not doing anything. Yeah, that's right. Given to us by God. But then as we are saved, we need the grace imparted mm. to live for him. Because the passage mm -hmm. and the passages you read, we need the enablement. We need the power to accomplish God's service or to live like him, to be like him, Amen. Amen. to live a life pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. Because when we were saved, God has, we were made a new creation. Mm -hmm. But we have the old man in us. Nature. We have some ways mm. that we will continue, the old ways mm. that we, remains with us. And remember the evil one will always be attacking and to have us to do the things that are contrary mm. to God. So we now have a spiritual nature and we are to walk in the spirit. But we need the grace of God Mm. to do such. Amen. We cannot do that of our own strength, with our own might, by the flesh, our own flesh. Mm. We need the power, the enablement from God. Mm. That is grace imparted. This is what we need. Remember the apostle here, he said, put away. And he was speaking to believers. Mm. Amen. He was asking them to put away certain things. You need the enablement. You need to have that power from God mm. to accomplish such, to do such things, mm. to put away the old man, to quench mm. the old man, mm. the old nature, to subdue the old nature, and to live in the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes, so true. And uh, God is able to give you that strength and courage to do these things. I, as you mentioned, the Old Testament, I had a, a king there, that uh, King Hezekiah, and it's interesting to know that God had given him some years on his life. Here it is, uh, the prophet came to him and he said, look, set your house in order. You're about to die. And God gave him 15 years on his life. 
You know, but then again, when you read further, what he did with those 15 years, he didn't uh, really do anything that to please God. A matter of fact, he did something that was wrong. And God brought him into uh, to question for that. And um, we, uh, we too are given grace. We are given time. We are given various things in our lives. And what are we doing with it? Very important. Let us do that which is pleasing in thy sight. Only what is done for God will last. That's very important. So God's grace. God's grace. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that portion in, um, in the book of John. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ our Lord. A vast difference between law and grace. And sometimes people mix up, they try to live a life of the law in a life of grace. And that's difficult. I can't see that uh, coming true. Can you give us... Uh... Well, the, 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 the law was really of works. Mm. You work and you get the blessing. Mm -hmm. Grace, you get the blessing and you work. That's right, that's right. You know, yeah. so you, you, you could work out your salvation. This is what it means. Yeah, yeah. You work out your salvation. What you have received from God, you can show it out as it were. Mm. He, gives, he gives you the enablement to do the things yeah. or to show or to demonstrate that you are indeed a new creation. Mm. Your life mm. can now be a blessing to others. And they can mm. see the change in you. They can mm. see the difference in you. Mm. All because of God's grace. Mm. But the law, you do things, and remember, many were doing things even to their, their fellow men. Yeah. That was not good enough things that they would not like for themselves. They wouldn't mm. like others to do unto them. They were doing. Many were hypocritical, yeah. pretending. Mm. And the Lord Jesus Christ was not loved by the Pharisees. Oh, no, no. And because these people, they, they adhere to the law. They were keepers of the law. Mm. But the Lord Jesus Christ, they called them hypocrites, whitewashed sepulchers. Yeah. They appear before man, you know, to, to be so righteous. Mm. But then God saw their hearts. God mm. sees the hearts. He knows mm. the heart. Yeah. So then our motives come into question. Mm -hmm. With what motive we do things? Mm -hmm. By the law, you do things with the motive mm -hmm. for men to see you, men to give you glory, men to praise you, mm -hmm. your fellow men. In fact, to, to, to make right with God, as it were. You mm -hmm. did things because mm -hmm. they offered sacrifices, etc. Mm -hmm. But with grace, God gives you the enablement because he saved you by his grace. And now he gives you grace imparted, the enablement to do things, to let your light so shine before men mm. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who art in heaven. Right, right. Because I want to bring back that verse we quoted at first. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace I saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But a verse that is very important that will help us there is Galatians chapter 2 and 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the Lord and Christ died in vain. So there we have it. That's right. Because it is not of works of righteousness yeah. which we have done. Mm -hmm. But by his mercy he has mm -hmm. saved us. Amen. His mercy in that he didn't give us the punishment we deserve. Mm -hmm. But his mercy is that, as I said, he didn't give us the punishment, but grace. He gave us what we did not deserve, yeah, the gift right. of God, eternal life. Mm -hmm. And this is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And remember when the Lord Jesus Christ came, he said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah. Grace and truth, and truth came, came by, by Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So yeah. we can thank God for his mm -hmm. wonderful grace. Right. And uh, overwhelming grace, his abundant grace. Where sin abound, grace, grace did much, much more, more abound. abound. 
And remember, folks, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, how wonderful is God's grace. And uh, as we close off this topic, we want to let you know that the very last verse in the Bible tells us, Revelation 22, 21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. <laughs> so even at the end there, the Lord is saying, my grace I yes. give unto you. You know, my grace I give unto you. How wonderful. So you can obtain that grace today, my dear friend, if you're not saved. You can uh, repent, believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead. You can accept Jesus as your personal savior. And he will give you that grace. He will give you that freedom. We can call upon him. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. And thou will glorify me. That's him. So God wants you to recognize this. So my dear friend, we will close off in prayer. And I'll ask our brother to close in prayer for us as we remember his grace, his mercy, his love towards us for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Precious God, we thank you for your grace and your wonderful grace. And we pray that those who are not saved, that they will come to the Lord Jesus Christ and experience the gift of God, Amen. which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be thy name forever. Amen and amen. May God bless. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times.